in cancer. I mean, we don't want to cut these people up. We don't want to like mess them up. We want to keep them intact. We want to keep their bodies intact the way that they're supposed to be. Um, it's also just causing more problems. You know, the, yeah, there are certain situations a person might need a surgery for something to get an obstruction yeah. or those type of things. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, I'm not saying all surgeries, but, you know, but most situations you would try to avoid, you know, any, any typical surgery to remove the cancer. Yeah, you know, it's it's like we need to think before we act. But like sometimes, you know, I would talk to my kids, think before you act, think before you say something. And just because you can doesn't mean you should. And yeah. It's wow. Hmm. That same strategy that I would talk to my kids as they were growing up, it's like that could apply to the conventional cancer world as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is obviously, you know, it's going to take a while for the standard of care to change because obviously a standard of care, you know, surgical removal, all that's like, uh, I mean, it, it's a funny now they talk, they talk about these pathologic complete responses. And so, which I get really excited about, I mean, so that they treat the patient and they they cure them of their cancer and then they cut the body part off to show that they cured it right so they so like oh we gave the patient chemo and, and immunotherapy which got rid of their breast cancer and then oh then we did mastectomy and all they showed there's no there's no there's no cancer there right that's a pathologic complete response that's what to talk about <laughs> i mean that that makes a sense well why do you want to maim these people I mean, they don't. They don't want that. I mean, people don't want to be cut up, I and mean, people want to be like they want to be how they were born and developed. They don't want to be like <laughs> messed up like that. I, I wonder if it, you know, flip it around a little bit. There, were, you were talking about breast cancer, and it's become very standard to just you know lop breast off left and right. And yeah. you know, if we flip that coin around and talked about testicular cancer, we were lopping yeah. test left and right. Might we not be in the same, you know, lop off mode? In- yeah, probably wouldn't. Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably not. It's you know, I think I think that the, the cancer pipes develop on the penis itself. Probably though, that would probably be the the part that would make it more. <laughs> so <laughs> you done having the kids? Yeah, I am. <laughs> why? Well, you don't need that anymore, right? We're gonna yeah. just pop that off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think it'd go over very well. I don't think so either. Yeah, no. I mean, you know, we 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 know that that the the future of of medicine is you know the the, the least invasive, the, the the doing things where you know keeping people intact. I mean, that has has to be our goal. I mean, if that's not our goal, I don't know what it, what is. I mean, we can't be acceptable that we're operating and doing this other stuff. No, we don't need to be doing this stuff. So we talked about chemo um, negatively impacting the immune system. We talked about corticosteroids negatively impacting the immune system. And the last one, which, you know, you really brought to my attention now, seems like almost two years ago, that yeah. I'm still blown away by yeah. how more people don't know because it's so readily available, so easy to make a big impact. It's how Tylenol, yeah, acetaminophen, yeah. You know, it's interesting because is a great drug for certain things. If you want to cool down an immune response, you know, if your if your immune system is overactive, you know, like you get an illness and your immune system inflamed, and you need to knock it down. Tylenol is a great drug for that. <laughs> I mean, it you know significantly reduces. Uh, well, 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 it was, oh, it actually significantly increases like some of the regulatory cells of myeloid derived suppressor cells and things like that, which will cool, which can cool things down. And, uh, yeah, the, you know, the study that came out of France was what alerted me to it. I mean, uh, Orléon Mahabel is a very, very, uh, great guy. He's big into intratumoral immunotherapy, like myself, Stanford guy that, but then is, he's French and so he's, he's over in France at Gustav Rossi. And, um, uh, he does a lot of work and, and, and we, we, we collaborate or sort of, you know, sort of collaborate together on things and obviously have similar interests. But he had gotten involved in this study and he, he's the one that, you know, well, he's kind of alerted me about it originally. He's like, hey, like, you're going to be surprised. Like, this thing else. He said there were a couple other drugs they were looking at too. I mean, there's like, like some of the benzos, um, you know, really? particularly Ad- Adivan, Ativan. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, Ativan was another one that should, was showing up. This is inhibiting the immune response. But, um, but yeah, Tylenol was, it was so surprising that study that they looked at where they looked at these, you know, patients that had renal cell carcinoma and, you know, they gave them Tylenol and they weren't responding to immunotherapy. And so, you know, obviously, I'm sure there'll be other studies or should be, but, but that can, should convince you right there. I mean, Tylenol, again, you know, in in certain situations can be a good drug if you need it, right? But but understand that it may be immune suppressing in a cancer aspect. And so, you know, for cancer patients who are under treatment, particularly cancer patients receiving immunotherapy, then, you know, Tylenol does not seem to be a good option for them because that's uh, going to suppress their immune response. And unfortunately, Tylenol is mixed in lots of things. I mean, Cancer patients, what do they have? They have a lot of pain, right? And what do, they, what do they give patients? Well, they give them a lot of like hydrocodone that's mixed with acetaminophen. Definitely. I mean, you know, so uh, patients also, they then like you see what pre treatment for chemo, Tylenol often, not uncommon pre treatment for immunotherapy, Tylenol. Right. <laughs> I, you know, that's uh, like the look, because lots of stuff in, and, uh, Look, we were guilty of it before. I mean, before I didn't know either. We used, we were like, hey, Tylenol's probably okay. I mean, why when, when I didn't know, I didn't really think that Tylenol was going to... I mean, I had no idea that it had that type of impact. It really surprised me. And then when you start looking at it, what, what kind of led them to it was that, you know, they were seeing a reduction of, a, of efficacy in vaccines in patients when they were giving Tylenol in close proximity to the vaccines. And that actually even led to the World Health Organization coming out with like a recommendation to not give Tylenol right. in a two-week interval with any vaccine. I don't know. People don't seem to know this. I don't know. That was like 2015. So that was pre-pandemic. Yeah. I wonder how many protocols during the pandemic have Tylenol. I, I don't know, but you know, it's 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 strange that you know they recognize that, but yet you know, and then it. They put out they put out the notice, but it didn't really. I, I'm, yeah, you know, obviously I don't I don't give a lot of vaccines. I guess I yeah. maybe wouldn't be in that that notice. But you would think I don't think anybody I talked to seemed to have heard about this. Right? They were like that. They, they were everybody was shocked. The I mean people that deal in that that you know yeah Tylenol. If you give a vaccine, it may reduce. The efficacy of vaccine twenty thirty percent. I don't know. I don't know the exact numbers, but that's what they were seeing or more. And uh, so clearly, that's why this group said, "Hey, if it does that, what does it do to cancer immunotherapy?" And that's why they went back and started looking. And that's when they started fi- finding and the, and their 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 paper out there, you know, which obviously anybody can look at. It gives gives you the information. And what I'm saying is, in, check out the show notes. You're going to be able to see the. The reference is there, and you can go read it for yourself. Uh, yeah. You know, don't take our word for it. We want you to invest yeah. in it. So, you know, it's really interesting. People go, I don't know, not, not that many people taking Tylenol. It's like, well, it's over the counter. And I found some data, and, you know, in 2021, the census found in the U.S. 331.9 million, 23% of U.S. adults use acetaminophen-containing medicine. So that's 52 million consumers. So that's not yeah. even looking at cancer. And you look at the number one symptom in advanced cancer, estimated estimated at a, a study looking at uh, 10,637 patients, actually a meta-analysis of 444 studies. Pain was the number one symptom in 44.5% of patients. Yeah. So this is something that roughly half of the patients with advanced cancer are are probably receiving. Yeah, I, I I know it's 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 unfortunate, and so you know that's why we try to alert people, and you know patients have to take this into their own hands because otherwise it's going to be given to them because the the healthcare providers don't understand the risk, and so right. you have to you you know that's why you know originally like when I when I wrote my book, so I started I started writing my book in like 2015. And I was going to write it as like a textbook, like for doctors, right? 
And I started it for a little while, and then I was like, you know what? I was like, no, none of them are going to read that. I was like, you know what? I need to go. I need to go to the patient because that's where I can help try to drive the change, not to the doctors. I mean, I think I, I think I could change it with the doctors, but no, I think it's better to go to the patients. And so that's why I wrote the book in the form to go to more educate the patients. And then the patients can then try to, you know, then educate the doctors, hopefully. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you know, you need a good doctor. I mean, look, look, patients educate me all the time and I, I receive it very well. Yeah. Well, you know, if patients bring me interesting stuff, I'm glad to look at it. I mean, look, there's lots, there's lots and lots of stuff out there. Nobody can know everything. And so, you know, so that's how you learn. I mean, you know, I learned so much from the patients themselves. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, that's a unique approach, um, Jason, in that, you know, first of all, you've got, a, you got a really big heart and, uh, you innovate, but you know, you're open to patient learning. It's like a patient today. Mm -hmm. Or actually, this patient yesterday evening I was talking to, and she said, "You know, I just saw this study. Have you heard of this study?" I said, "No, please send it to me. I, you know, yeah. I'll want to read it and I'll let you know what I think." Um, and and so, you know, we we have to have that that open yeah. dialogue with patients because we can't know it all. There's no, no way that we know it all. Nobody does. We have to work with patients. Yeah, I mean, it, to me, it's like, you know, and obviously now I think we're making good advances, and I think. We understand lots of things, and it's getting complex I think it, for patients to bring stuff that would be more advanced than we've seen. But previously, you know, patients, um, look, I'd say, look, you you bring me something, look, look, let's let's consider it, let's 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 do it. There's something interesting. Let's just try it. I mean, you know, I, I I'm here to help you. So whatever I can do to help you, and it's not just when we look at the Tylenol and recognizing, okay, there seems to be a. a significant decreased response if not any at all of you know the immunotherapy but it, we also know the mechanism so you mentioned the increase in t-regulating cell infiltration into the uh, tumor yeah, environment yeah i think they said you know that in their study when it was so when they, they took it to the animal model and tried to look at it a little bit and they saw definitely an increase in, in what we call myeloid derived suppressor cells so these these can be various groups, you know. Could they be, you know, macrophages? Could they be neutrophils, basophils? All of them. I mean, there's all, all these type of cells that are involved. Mm -hmm. Um. So so yeah, that you know, and th those are big protectors against cancer. We we have drugs to try and knock them down. So so Tylenol is kind of the opposite of like some of our some of our drugs that we actually use that are successful. I mean, to to successfully treat cancer, sometimes you really, you need to actually, you know, really knock down those myeloid derived suppressor cells. So, so Tylenol is the opposite of that. So yeah, because yeah, within the tumor microenvironment, they they suppress the immune system and yeah, yes. plays a big role in evading the immune surveillance and leaving. Another one was um, I, I found uh, some articles looking at Tylenol um, over ex increasing the expression of indolamine dioxygenase. So very involved in you know localized immunosuppression as well. Then increase in arrow content. Um, so all of these really promoting this immunosuppression, suppressive cytokine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a lot to obviously whatever you, you can. It, it clearly, for to increase myeloid drive suppressor cells, it's doing multiple factors that are probably you know uh, immune suppressive. So when you look at this, Tylenol decreases T. These, these are quotes now. Tylenol decreases T cell mediated anti tumor immunity. Tylenol reduces the efficacy of immune checkpoint inhibiting therapy. Tylenol yeah. significantly limits the anti PD one therapy associated effect on interferon gamma production. Yeah. In vivo experiments indicated that the low lower anti cancer effects observed with when Tylenol was combined with immune checkpoint inhibitor was associated with significant increase in tumor infiltrating T regulating cells. Quote yeah. after quote after quote after quote. Yeah. So, and and, yeah. and I think you're the first person I ever heard this from. Yeah, I well, you know, I was fortunate to to kind of run right into that, uh, and you know, a, l a little bit because it's like having lots of different people I communicate with in, in the cancer world, and you know, we all sort of just have the goal of like trying to to help people and get you know cures, and so we're we always like share you know our information you know just openly, just so like when we find stuff like hey, like us, like look at this, look at that. So, um, yes, yeah, so I was fortunate to be able to. To, to see that 
early because you know, otherwise maybe I wouldn't have seen it for a while and could have harmed a lot more patients. Well, Dr. Williams, thank you again for uh, joining us to really provide some just you know low-hanging fruit, empowering patients to really be aware of common therapeutics employed during cancer treatment may impact their immune system, chemotherapy, corticosteroids, and Tylenol. And again, empower yourself with this knowledge because we want you to be the force, fact, the force vector of change for other patients and, and really influence doctors to look at the evidence, not to take our word for it, not to maybe take your word for it, though they should listen to it, but turn them to the science. And then let the science lead the way. So check out the show notes because you're going to find the supporting evidence there. And so that's going to be what empowers you. Dr. Williams, thank you for being the, the old you could, doctor you that innovates, that's open to new ideas, that's open to new science, and that's willing to speak out about it because you're really, you're bringing forth the next generation of cancer care. Thanks again, man. Uh, thank you, Dr. Goodyear. Appreciate it. Always good to talk with you.